Hey folks, Pastor Josh here, and we're going to continue our study here in Ephesians chapter 1. We've been doing Ephesians for about the last four videos. This is the fifth video of the study, and we are going to go through through here, and we are going to <clears throat> excuse me, talk about this. We're going to dissect it a little bit, and we are going to look at it. Now you have to excuse my, my allergies. We're getting really bad today. I don't know why, but they are. So, um, whatever. It's it's cold out and whatever's going on. Who knows? I don't know. But we're gonna look at Gala or Ephesians, not Galatians, we just finished Galatians. And all the Galatian studies are on YouTube or on the Facebook. Uh, not all of them are on Facebook yet. Um, but they're all on YouTube. Uh, you can go there, search my name, Joshua Denoyer, in the search box. My picture comes up, go ahead and click on that. They're all there. Um, you can look at them, they're properly labeled. You can read those, you can study those or relook at those or whatever you want to do with them. Um, you can look at them, you can, uh, you can uh, learn from them, take notes, and all those good things. So we, we moved on to Ephesians. We went through the salutation. And we went, now we're in the midst of doing, in this section, verses 3 through verses 14, and we are in verse 11, and we're in the section that says, spiritual blessings in Christ. And there's a lot here. And we have talked uh, at length and very much at in depth of what this word says. The, the introduction says, and we are to, it says right here, it says we are to... Uh, we are to uh, read read it in sections and digest it slowly. So, reading it in sections, dissect it slowly. So, take each paragraph in each section, look at it, and dissect it, and and and, and pray, pray, prayerfully consider it. That's what we should be doing when we do our when we do our Bible study. De de devotions are different. Bible study is Bible study. Devotions is devotional time with Jesus. Now, let's go to verse 11 of Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 11 and following down says, In him also we have received an inheritance being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his own will, that we who were the first to hope in Christ should live for the praise of his glory. Now, in him also we have received an inheritance being predestined according to the purpose of him who works in all things according to the counsel of his will. Now, he's following up with the previous part of this section. He's talking about how we... Uh, by grace, God has given us redemption and forgiveness through the blood of Christ. If we look at, if we look at verse 7, it says, In Him we have redemption through His blood that, and the forgiveness of sins through the riches of His grace. Okay? Uh, so that, that's what he's referring to here. In Him also we have received an inheritance. We talked about this a little bit. Why? Why? Why would it say we've received an inheritance when we have this possibility and this propensity that when we, prior to knowing Jesus, were considered an enemy, we are considered hostile, we are considered uh, anything positive of someone that who deserves an inheritance, or opposite, opposite, not positive, opposite of someone who deserves an inheritance. So think about that for a moment, okay? What takes place in a person's life? It says, In him also we receive an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his good of his own will. So what that's basically saying is that we have received an inheritance. And uh, in other portions of scripture we, we've talked about says that we are joint heirs with Jesus Christ. What does that mean? Well, right here, before prior to salvation, we talked about this yesterday uh, in length. 
that um, we are predestined. We are not. We're we are um, enemies of God. We are hostile to God. The law, as we talked about in the book of Galatians, the law, the law's work in our life is that it shows us that we need a savior. Once it's done that, the work of the law is, is complete in our life. And then we come over here to Jesus. We accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. Then we're under the new covenant. Under the new covenant. So then when we accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, we are given every single blessing of Jesus from, from God, same as Jesus. We are joint heirs with Jesus. We have an inheritance of, and we are sons of God. No longer enemies, but sons. That's why we can, that's why we can say that we are, um, we are given the ability to have an inheritance. First John says that we are, we are, we are given the ability to be called sons of God. Let's let's look at First John. What does First John have to say? Now, now I've been studying First John on the radio, talking about it on the radio, and so this is something that um, is pretty near and dear to me now it says um, I've tried to figure out where it's at now um, it's probably in chapter 3 end of chapter 2 chapter 3 of first John but what it's talking about is that those who who's accepted him he's given them the power to be called sons of God okay so that's that's kind of the scripture in in a in a certain way. It's, it's saying that those who accept him, he is given the power to be called sons of God. So we are no longer enemies, but we're sons of God. And so therefore, we have the same thing Jesus had: the inheritance of Jesus, uh, the the blessings of God, the joint heirs with Jesus Christ. We have an eternity with God the Father. And what a, what a great thing! What a great thing! Now. Let's go to verse 12. 11 and 12 go together. It says, In him also we have received an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his own will, that we who are first, we are first to hope in Christ, should live for the praise of his glory. In him, verse 13, you also, after hearing the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation and after believing in him were sealed with with the promised Holy Spirit who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise to to the praise of his glory now there's a lot of big words in there but let's look at it Verse 12, that we who were first to hope in Christ should live for the praise of his glory. Wait. And that we who were first born, we that were first hope in Christ should live for the praise of his glory. So, what should we be living for? What should we be living for? Should we, should we be living for our life? For what we have here, what we have today, I think there is a there is a place and there's a priority for for living for such things on the earth, like living for your family, living for uh, the goodness of all people, living for things like that. In the context of living for Jesus and allowing Jesus to put that love and that desire in your heart. Okay, we we should. First and foremost, live for Jesus. But then in the context of that part of living for Jesus, we are to then we are to then uh, bring about or or show forth his love, his will, his desire for humanity. And in doing so, we we then put forth some of that energy that Jesus gives us, some of that love Jesus gives us to meet the needs of of people who, who need their needs met. Uh, loving on people. Sharing the gospel with people. Living living uh, for the betterment of our family. Those kinds of things 
we can have in the context of living for Jesus and having Jesus uh, be first and foremost in our life. I've always said that if you put Jesus first, he'll work everything else out. You put him first, he'll work everything else out because he loves you. He loves your family. He loves your friends. He loves your workmates. He loves those who you rub shoulders with. And if you and, and he needs you, if you're a believer, he needs you to be a, a witness for him to them. And if you don't have that desire and that love, then you really need to check and see where you are in Jesus. You really need to see who you're living for. Because a lot of times, when we live for ourselves, even as Christians, we, we see that we don't have the desire to have... Uh, people uh, coming to know Jesus. We don't have the, the desire to, to share the word of God with, with with the people God would have us to share it with. We feel the need to not do those things. We may call ourselves Christians, but then we find ourselves living for our own will, our own gain, our own desires. And see, that can be a little bit difficult to deal with when it comes to actually having an effect for the will of God and for the kingdom of God. Okay, so we need to we need to understand that we need to live for Jesus and allow Jesus to work through us that we may show forth his grace to those around us. And some might say, well that's living for doing this and doing that, but in the context of allowing Jesus to do the work in you, that's what we're looking for. That's what we're looking for. And that, and, and that should be your goal. That should be your goal. It really should. Because, because God desires for you to, to know Him fully. And you're only going to know Him fully by not only taking this in. You know, I've got my Bible here. Not only taking this in. And not only listening to Him speak back to you. But also bringing forth the Word to other people the full living of Jesus, the full calling, the full life of Christ. He said that we would live more abundantly. He's come that we'd have life more abundantly. That we would really, really live. Part of that is is not only the peace and joy that Jesus brings and and, and everything that like that and, and just the and just the freedom Jesus brings, but also the, the one of the one of the big parts of that is living in the Word of God, living in the knowledge of God, living in the presence of God, and then bringing, showing forth the love of God to those around you. That's what it means about fully loving and fully living for God. Now, now, he says that we should be the, that we who were first to hope in Christ should live in the praise of his glory. In him you also, after hearing the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and after believing in him, were sealed by the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of the inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession, to the praise of his glory. So, it says here that we are sealed by the promised Holy Spirit. If we have given our life to Jesus Christ, if we are living for God, if we are reading His Word, praying to Him, talking to Him, He's talking to us, and we're showing forth His love, then we are sealed by the promised Holy Spirit. Now some might say, well, that's, that's, that is a word that says, you know, I can live the way I want to because I'm sealed by the Holy Spirit. No. Sorry, not the case. Not the case. You have to be following the word, following Jesus. You can walk away all you want to. And, and I've talked very much in depth about this particular doctrine that you can watch the videos and hear it. I'm not going to do it again. But there are certain things that God requires of you in order to be sealed by God, in order to be sealed by the Holy Spirit in order to be to, to stay in stay with God stay in God there are things that are required of you to do so so 
until next time, this is kind of an abrupt ending. I don't mean to be abruptly about it, but that's my challenge. Uh, we're, at, we're over 15 minutes. We're going to go a little, a few minutes over, but my challenge is just to see what you're living for. What are you living for? Is your relationship with God right? You have everything in, in order that you should have in order. Because if if you don't, you need to. Um, but but do that. Do that. Allow God to work in your life. Allow God to do something, especially this Christmas season. So, until next time, this is Pastor Josh. God bless.